all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and today we're looking at another completed commission uh it's a Deptus custodes expansion commission uh for a previous um one that i have done for a client um in this case we have uh it's basically just filling out like a bunch of squads we already did and then uh adding in some uh additional reinforcements uh so just kind of working down the line here uh from the front left We've got five custodian guards with the uh, sword and board or shield and sword. And then behind them, we have five with the uh, spears. And then we have four of the uh, Dawn Eagle jet bikes. And then up front, we have two shield captains in the middle there. Uh, one with the sword and board, one with the spear. And then also a uh, magnetized Vexilus Praetor. Uh, so you can take off the, uh, you know, he's a Terminator armor, obviously, but you can take off the Vexilla. Uh, and then we got a magnetized axe for him as well. And then we have uh, six of the Terminators uh, to fill out the squad. And then um, next up front on the right here, uh, we have the... Um, uh, up front on the right here, uh, we have the... Oh my gosh. I don't know why I can never remember names when I start doing like videos. Um, these are the uh, Wardens up front on the right here. Uh, five of the Custodian Wardens with the axes. And then we have next the... Um, these are the Sag Sagitarum or Sagitarum uh, guard. Uh, so there's 10 of them. Um, they have like the longer ranged bolt weapons, guns. Uh, and then last but not least in the back there, uh, we have six of the uh, Venatari uh, jump shock troops. And then there's a couple like random little bits um, as well. Uh, again, just to kind of fill out the commission um, with some uh, missing stuff from the last one. So we have like a second uh, Cestus or Fist. We got a couple of the... Uh, uh, guns as well for um, like the big boy dreadnought uh, and then we got like um, you know the magnetized axe and then also the uh, weapon arms for the venatari uh, so one cool thing about the venatari is uh, the client had requested both weapon options for all the guys uh, so i actually glued the shoulder pads to the models and then uh, magnetized the arms uh, so you can kind of swap them out so uh, we can just kind of take a look at uh, one of the venatari first here um, so this one was uh, requested to be a little bit or more ornate uh, than like your traditional uh, Venatari were. Uh, in this case, obviously as well, uh, we have the Ruin Temple style bases, uh, just custom bases um, that I make for a lot of these different commissions. Uh, so in this case, he's got the pistol and like the little uh, buckler or shield. Uh, and then, you know, obviously our traditional, I shouldn't say traditional, my traditional uh, like white with the blue and gold kind of accents as well uh, and then you'll see obviously um you know like i said this one has upgraded shoulder pads on him and a little more gold so he looks like slightly more ornate uh, but you can see basically what i did was took like small magnets and put them inside of the arms and then put them inside the torsos as well and then you're able to um just go ahead and swap in uh whatever weapons you want him to have uh so in this case you can swap between like the uh glaive or the spears um, and the, uh, you know, the pistol and buckler. Uh, so you have the ability to essentially like have both options uh, that are made from Forge World um, available to your models as well. So, you know, you don't have to have six with shields and pistols and six with spears. Uh, you can just have the six that you want and then you can just switch between them. So uh, that was my first time doing a commission like that. Um, specifically, I was curious how I was going to do it because you know, obviously that one has upgraded shoulder pads uh, that would normally come on like the Terminator shield captain. Um, so that's gives me an option right there, you know, to use some other pads instead. Uh, but typically, you know, every custody comes with a left and a right shoulder pad. Uh, so you don't have the options to just glue extra shoulder pads onto all the different arms. Uh, so it was important to figure out a way that I was able to essentially just glue the shoulder pads to the model and then be able to switch uh, the actual like arms themselves out and then obviously the you know weapon attached so uh, this basically was you know just a quick little like problem solver uh, just to make this happen and then you'll see obviously like you know very cool models I've actually never done uh, the uh, Venatari before so very pleased with the overall models themselves uh, they glue real nicely to the bases as well um, typically these stands are like a little bit shady or a little bit shaky uh, but on these models they are like much more like I would say like durable um, but again you know you don't want to use too strong of magnets uh, i will put in the notes uh, exactly which magnets i used but uh you know the ability to essentially just swap out those weapons 
obviously you know very cool and then gives you like slight little bit of like the posability as well so you can make sure you know there's really only uh like three different styles for these models uh so it gives you the ability to kind of mix them up a little bit so everyone doesn't look the same and then also obviously changing the bases up a little bit um i swapped out like the heads with different heads from the same kit so that no two same poses had also the same head uh so it gives you like a little more diversity so um, and then next we have like the uh, Sagittarium Guard or, I uh, mean, I think I'm saying that right, Sagittarium. Uh, very cool models. Once again, um, the guns are extremely good and they add in like some nice little like, uh, you know, more ranged bolt fire, a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say like mass firepower, but just, you know, the spears and the spears are sort of like short range, the um, sword and board are like super short range and then these are more like a medium range and uh, good for like laying out you know more heavily armored troops but not like you know you're not for like terminators but more for like primaris and stuff like that so um and uh you know obviously they're durable too <clears throat> excuse me so they're gonna be able to outshoot most everything at like that distance so you know typically those dudes against primaris they got a bunch of extra wounds they've got a bunch of hard hitting guns and uh you know they can stand at a longer range and get multiple shots a piece as we're like you know primaris with like stalker bolt rifles or uh whatever the long range bolt rifles are going to be much less effective especially against like high armor save high wound models with uh you know toughness five instead of toughness four so they definitely have a lot of durability and then also they're a nice troop choice uh you know to kind of like fill out your army because if you have a bunch of like mixed units of sword and shield and the spears uh you could also have like uh you know a squad of them holding objectives in the back with a nice line of sight so uh, and then this is the uh this is a squad leader again um the client requested that he have uh like the bottom half with like the little uh like skirt or whatever you want to call it uh, just to give him like a little more of an ornate look uh so he is like clearly the squad leader uh without going overboard obviously as well and um typically i will leave the helmeted heads on most guys and then i'll do like bear heads for like uh shield captains or something like that just to give like um you know a little bit of distinction to them and then same with like you know you get like the cloaks obviously come available as well in uh the regular guard kits and then the um warden kits but very cool models overall and then we got like that kind of jade looking uh like um kind of green look to the uh, weapons as well and then, you know, obviously the eyes, it's hard, tough to see in these videos, but, you know, the eyes have like a nice green glow to them uh, using like that Tesseract glow. But uh, very cool models, obviously. And, uh, you know, they really look awesome, in, especially in like numbers like this as well. And then obviously, um, you know, these are all magnetized to fit onto the Dreadnought. So now with this, previously he had the other two guns and one of the fists. And now um, with the addition of these weapons as well, he'll have everything available and then you know once again uh, we've got the magnetized vaxilla again on this model he asked for like the more eight ornate look so i use the um you know extra gold uh shoulder pads from the terminator kit and then uh you know obviously the uh cloaks a bunch of nice little like highlights and everything very cool model and then you have the ability to swap in the axe if you don't need the vexilla and terminator armor or in this case you know he has a a uh, couple vexillas already with like uh, regular armor on that are magnetized as well so he has the options basically to just run this dude as a regular terminator or even potentially a shield captain um instead of uh you know and again there's like some distinctions obviously the shield captain shoulders and then like the bare head uh so just giving them options and uh you know there's no reason not to do like a simple conversion like that simple magnetization like that it basically costs nothing and you paint one extra weapon uh, but now you have like you know much more versatility in your actual army overall so um and then you know obviously a bunch of just the regular uh loris terminators uh once again very very cool models i mean absolutely phenomenal i love the detail on the custodes and uh, i love the way the contrast paints um go with these guys as well so like in this case we have like the um uh the talisar blue for like the cloaks and the shoulder pads and everything and then uh you know like manually highlighted uh, and again all that stuff will be down in the notes and then um you know we've used the uh 
what is it white scar no uh the white contrast paint for the actual armor itself uh, and then like uh this is the black templar is all the black on here and then we have our traditional uh like games workshop silver and gold retributor armor and um uh lead belcher as well um and then finally um the actual weapon itself like the green on the weapon uh, i did that actually with um the games workshop uh, it's like the technical no no that's one of the contrast paints also that's the uh green contrast paint but very nice looking overall and obviously the base is like take it to the next level and then we've got just like a couple regular short and board sword and board dudes so you know with this specific commission he already has five of each five swords and boards and five of the spears uh so with the addition of five more of each uh, he'll now have 10 of each so he can run like a full squad of either or mixed squad and then obviously the uh sagittarium uh, as well so but once again, very cool models. I love Custodes. Um, way before these were ever created or released, before they ever did like the Talons of the Emperor set, um, I was just literally patiently waiting for years uh, for them to release these models. And once they come out, I mean, you know, the amount of options and versatility and the overall like quality of these models, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then here's one of the Shield Captain conversions or Shield Captains uh, that we made up. This one specifically uh, was requested with the uh, spear. So we would have a shield captain with the spear. And then in this case, we took the warden, um, like lower half of his body. Well, really, it's a whole warden body. Um, and then also like the warden cloak as well. Uh, to obviously like distinguish that he is very clearly a shield captain. And then I also did like a little bit of gold, extra gold on like that little uh, eagle like above his head basically. And then also did gold on the um, chest plate there as well as where normally I would do that in silver. So just a little extra gold on this guy uh, in addition to like the cloak and uh, I guess you would call it tabard. And then here's one as well requested with a sword and board or sword and shield, uh, whatever you want to call it. Same deal though. I took a different lower half of a body so they didn't look the same. And then, uh, you know, once again, we've got that uh, cloak or cape uh, set up as well. So this is like the shoulder pads um, that have like a built-in cape um, going from them. And this is available in the warden kit as opposed to like your traditional um, like uh, cape, which comes from like your regular custodies kit. So uh, this is basically just like these are just basically two warden shield captains that I've swapped the weapons on. Uh, essentially is how it works out so and he already has one with the axe a shield captain with the axe uh, so you know once again this just provides more options uh, to essentially like fill out his army so he can always be able to take uh, what he wants um, and then finally you can just grab one of these bad boys back here uh, you know the regular I shouldn't say regular but uh, the Virtu spray tours um, you know once again awesome models probably the coolest and most effective bikes in the game I mean, these things hit hard, move fast. They got a lot of wounds, do a bunch of damage. And uh, now with the addition of these four, uh, he'll have 10 of the uh, regular bikes. And then also like Shield Captain on uh, the Relic Jet Bike as well. Uh, which if you haven't checked out how we do the Relic Jet Bike, highly recommend you check out some of the other uh, videos. Uh, because uh, we show how to do like the conversion for like the Relic Jet Bike. And then also how to magnetize your jet bikes as well uh, for easy storage and... Uh, you know transport etc and then also you know if you're playing a game and you move it right up against the guy and the bike is like bumping into him uh, you have the ability to just kind of spin it so the base is representing like where the model's actually at but you don't have to worry about like the two models like crashing into each other or whatever or if you want to do like some cool narrative or pictures or whatever you know it gives you the option to essentially like pose the weapon up in the air down low um etc you know so uh, but overall very cool models and then once again you can see we kind of did uh, like the actual screen on his arm and then the one on the uh, bike as well uh, that is using like that tesseract glow uh, to give like that nice bright kind of look to it and then just one little highlight dot and uh, when i do these bikes too uh, before i put the rider on them in order to get like the tesseract to settle at the top because i want it darker at the top and lighter at the bottom i actually put like the bikes upside down and let them sit like that so the tesseract kind of runs to the top and like uh the pigment settles to the top and then when you put that white white dot white dot it sticks out like uh you know extra bright and really like shows it off
and uh, you'll notice as well you know same type of thing i do like the tesseract glow on like the little tough to kind of see this one but on the little plasma bit and then i'll put like a little dot of the uh, white in there as well and uh you know definitely leads for a uh, nice finishing touch so uh overall very pleased with uh how everything came out i know the client is as well uh the first part of the army essentially has like two tanks uh one of the big boy dreadnoughts and then one each of the uh sword shield and spear dreadnought uh, six bikes, including the uh, shield captain relic jet bike, and then uh, you know five guard with spears, five guard with uh, swords, and then uh, four terminators as well. Uh, Terminator shield captain, couple vaxillas, um, and then uh, five of the wardens. So essentially, with the addition of these models uh, to his existing army, uh, he'll basically have like every option available. Um, with the exception of, uh, you know, even on the grav tanks as well, uh, we did both turrets. So he has both options for the turrets. He has all the options for like the guns on the dreadnoughts. Uh, definitely just a little bit of magnetizing just takes this army to the next level because he essentially has everything available in the codex now. Um, you know, and obviously this is big enough that it could be an army on its own. Uh, it's over 40 models. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it was like 43 models or something like that. So uh, very nice setup. Um, came out phenomenally well i love this army i love the color scheme that he picked um as well as uh you know like the basing setup and everything um very very cool army and then obviously just having like uh the ability to take anything out of the codex is pretty phenomenal as well so and uh from what i understand he has been getting some great reviews and uh you know popular amongst his local game store uh you know obviously anybody that has a painted army people would rather play with it or against them um, as you know, it takes the game to the next level and really, you know, it's what it's really all about. And, uh, you know, we're all guilty of playing games with our, you know, unpainted, barely built models or using proxies or whatever. But uh, there's nothing like playing Warhammer the way it's supposed to be. So, uh, but here we have it, the Adeptus Custodes Expansion Commission. Uh, this is wave two for his army. So uh, I will post up the wave one video in here. You can also see how to make, uh, you know, the... Virtus Praetor uh, Relic Jet Bike Conversion um, for if you're doing a Shield Captain on the Relic Jet Bike. Also shows uh, how to do the bases in one of the videos and then uh, you know how I magnetize the tanks and dreadnoughts as well. Uh, so if you haven't checked out some of those previous videos, uh, I highly recommend you take a look into some of the older stuff there. And then uh, you know eventually down the line here uh, in a couple months, I will have the next portion of the army, the final portion of the army, uh, Wave 3 completed so there's a bunch more additions a bunch more forge world and uh, you know if you saw like the first uh video we had the uh oh i can't remember her name now it's not crawl but it's like the uh female character uh for the sisters and then um uh, you know in the expansion there's a bunch more of the sisters and it's not the sisters of battle it's the sisters of silence actually uh so he basically has a bunch of Sisters of Silence to go along with it as well. So when it's all said and done, he'll basically have like the equivalents of, you know, all the talons of the Emperor options. So, uh, but once again, very happy with how it came out. Um, definitely check out some of the previous videos and uh, you can see some of the up close stuff, how we do the conversions, how we do the bases, how we do the magnetization. Um, and, uh, you know, always in the notes, uh, we'll say the size of the magnets used as well as, uh, you know, what components were used to build these models and uh, most importantly like uh, you know the paints as well so if you wanted to duplicate or do something similar uh, if you'd like a specific look or whatever uh, you're able to uh, do that as well so uh, but there you have it just wanted to do another uh, commission reveal video before this one goes out the door uh, once again very pleased with how it come uh, came out uh, it was nice to be able to finish off that sisters of battle uh, commission that we previously posted up a couple weeks ago and then also this one as well so now we are uh, you know basically very much caught up now uh, as a couple of these had longer lead times than typical um, so uh, now that we're back to regular should be able to put out a little more regular content for the channel and uh, do a little bit more like discretionary conversions and paint jobs as well i kind of stayed out of the whole uh curse city situation initially initially just because there's so much like negativity and everything with it um, but uh now i have my box curse city just sitting there waiting to be opened and painted and eventually played uh so um some point in time in the near future i'm gonna bust into that and uh maybe do like a 24 hour you know 
marathon video of how much I can get painted or just do like a straight through uh, painting of the entire box set or something like that. Um, I had also tooled around with the idea of uh, like the new skeletons or new zombies that are coming out and just doing like a box of each of those with the ones that come from Curse City. So doing like 30 models at once and just assembly line painting them. I'm not sure exactly how it all work out. Uh, there still seems to be like a lot of like soured people behind the whole Curse City situation and everything. And I mean, I get it. It sucks when you can't get what you want. And, you know, deep down inside, we all just want our toys. But I think the most important thing to remember is, is there's a global pandemic going on and, you know, tons of issues all over the place in all kinds of countries. Like we just had like a massive gas shortage, uh, you know, and it sucks if you can't get your gas. But, you know, that's, I think, a little more serious than if you can't get your Curse City. And, um, you know, say normally you would buy Curse City for 200 bucks. Maybe you get it for like 160 if you get a 20% local discount before tax and everything. You can still buy Curse City right now on the internet brand new for like 250 bucks. So realistically, worst case scenario, you have to pay an extra 50 to $90 for the box set, which is already a great deal. It makes it less of a great deal, but it's not like you can't get it if you don't want it. So I wish everybody would just grow up a little bit and uh, be a little bit more mature because it's not that serious. Eventually, Curse City is going to come back. Um, seeing all the negativity, though, just makes me not even want to bust into my box and start making videos about it uh you know until it's like available again because i think then people will be happy again and they'll want to see it and want to paint it and want to do it so it sucks for the people that uh went ahead and pre-ordered it or did get a copy uh but you know it is what it is uh in the end it's just a game it's not that serious and uh you know Back in the day, I've been in this hobby for years upon years upon years, and we would literally go months without hearing from Games Workshop or having new reveals or new products. We would go years without a updated codex. Um, I think we are very fortunate that this hobby is growing as much as it is. There's tons of new players. There is nonstop content being released. There's nonstop new sculpts and models and amazingness coming out. So, you know, if every once in a while you can't get what you want or you have to pay a little more for it, I really don't think it's that serious. Um, you know, I, I think everybody just needs to be like a little more positive because it just seems like the Games Workshop community is just turning into a bunch of like whiner little crybabies. And the truth is, you know, I would say, well, if you don't like this brand, just go use another brand. Or if you don't like this game, play another game. Or if you don't like this manufacturer, you know, buy somebody else's models. But the truth is, Games Workshop does it better. So the fact that, you know, they sell out of stuff immediately, the fact that they have the absolute best models, uh, you know, the coolest game mechanic, very popular game. Uh, as far as like tabletop war gaming, I think they're like top of the list, um, you know, or at least like up there, you know, there may be one or two that's on the same level with them. But, uh, you know, overall, we should be extremely fortunate. There's so many new players coming into the hobby. Uh, there's so many new models coming out. There's so many new and updated rules. We're getting so many interactions from Games Workshop as a whole. Uh, you know, typically when something you like does well, you should be happy about it. And for whatever reason, uh, just because people can't get their toys or get them for the price that they want, somebody's charging a little extra for them or they're a little harder to get or they have to pre-order it directly from Games Workshop to get it. It's not that serious. There's way worse issues in the world. Um, and if that's what you're really worried about, then you probably don't have time or the money to be playing a game like Warhammer. So uh, without going on too epic of a rant there, uh, I just wanted to kind of touch on that and mention it because like, I just noticed like there's just so much negative connotations lately and so much like just cryberry baby complaining like nonstop about, you know, Curse City and Games Workshop and stuff selling out. And the truth is, you know, if you want stuff, pre-order it. Uh, if you're not that worried about it, you know, just get it later on or buy it from somebody at a premium or whatever. But the truth is, you know, we all have tens or hundreds or thousands of models in gray plastic, maybe boxes not even opened yet that we could work on. So if you have to wait a little longer to get something or you have to pay a little more, uh, you know, than retail to get something, I really don't think it's that serious. Uh, you know, if you're tight on cash, you can probably grab some of your uh, pile of shame and sell off a couple models. And, you know, it's essentially just trading them for the new stuff uh, if that's what you want to do. So, um, you know, like anybody, sometimes I miss the releases as well. Uh, I did not get a Bellicor, unfortunately, which I would definitely like to paint up. And, uh, you know, I think that's an awesome model and everything. And 
you know, sucks, but it's not that big a deal. There's tons of other stuff I can paint or build or work on. And, you know, eventually if I want to get Bellacor, I know he will be available again. Or I can buy him, you know, through some kind of, uh, you know, third party. It is what it is. It's not ideal. I would rather get a discount and get him exactly when I want him. But it's not always how it works. So, uh, but anyway, didn't want to go on too long of a rant there. Um, thank you for uh, checking out the video today. Uh, Deptus Custodes, Wave 2 of the uh, Expansion Commission. Oh, I wish I could remember what he called them too. He had a super cool name for uh, for these dudes, but can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, but it was a very cool name. Uh, but I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Make sure you check out the uh, uh, description down below for any information that you want as far as uh, you know what size magnets or what paints I used or how we made the bases, etc. Check out the previous videos on how we did some of the conversions, magnetization, and uh, custom bases as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Share with your buddies online, etc. Definitely appreciate it. I am Warhammer Man. This is Warhammer Man Studios. And I'm out of here.